Long before the concept of the Netherlands took shape in the late 16th century, the Frisian people thrived along the coastal regions of the North Sea, from Belgium to Denmark. Our story begins in these ancient times, over a millennium ago, in lands shaped by the sea's ebb and flow. The Frisians, known for their seafaring skills and robust community, were a people deeply connected to their environment. The sea was both a lifeline and a constant threat, molding a society resilient in the face of nature's unpredictability. Life here was not easy. The Frisians mastered the art of living with the water, building turpin, earthen mounds to protect their homes and livestock from the sea's wrath. Governance among the Frisians was grounded in collective decision-making. Without kings or lords, they were pioneers of a society where matters were settled in assembly, known as the Thing, where every free man had a voice. This democratic ethos was rare in a time dominated by monarchies and empires. It fostered a sense of unity and shared responsibility, essential for survival in these harsh landscapes. The Frisians' connection to the sea was not merely about survival, it was also their highway to the wider world. With sturdy ships, they ventured far beyond their shores, trading with distant lands, from the British Isles to the Baltic Sea. These voyages were not just commercial ventures, but also a means of cultural exchange. Through trade, the Frisians spread their influence and brought back knowledge and goods from afar. But this era of independence and prosperity was not to last. The coming centuries would bring challenges and changes that tested the Frisian spirit like never before. As the Frisians thrived in their coastal homeland, changes were stirring in the heartland of what we now call the Netherlands. It was here that a new people began to emerge, known today as the Dutch. This land was a crossroads, a meeting place for various Germanic tribes, the Franks, the Saxons, and others. But it wasn't just the Germanic tribes that shaped this land. The Romans, with their vast empire, left behind roads, cities, and a legacy of governance. Later, Viking raiders and traders brought with them goods, ideas, and occasionally, terror. In the midst of these influences, the people who lived here began to forge a distinct identity. They built dikes to claim land from the sea, like the Frisians, but also established trading towns that grew into bustling centers of commerce. The term Dutch, derived from Deutsch, originally meant people or folk. Over centuries, it came to signify those who lived in these low-lying lands. As these communities prospered, the Dutch identity became synonymous with maritime prowess, mercantile success, and a knack for innovation. But this success was not without its challenges, especially for their neighbors, the Frisians. For the Frisians, the rise of the Dutch marked the beginning of a new era. It was a time of uncertainty, as their ancient freedoms and ways of life faced the ambitions of a growing power. The arrival of the Dutch on the historical stage set the scene for centuries of interaction, conflict, and eventual cooperation with the Frisians. It was a relationship that would test the resilience and adaptability of both peoples. As the Dutch began to forge their identity and expand their influence, the ancient freedoms of the Frisian people faced new threats. The stage was set for a series of conflicts that would define the relationship between these two peoples for centuries. At the heart of these early skirmishes was the struggle for control over trade routes and territories. The Frisians, with their deep-seated maritime tradition, had long dominated the northern seas. But the Dutch, with their growing fleet of merchant ships, sought to expand their reach. The first clashes were sporadic, often arising from disputes over trade and navigation rights. Yet, each confrontation sowed the seeds of enduring rivalry. The Frisians fought fiercely, determined to protect their way of life and maintain their independence. The impact of these early conflicts on Frisian society was profound. Towns were fortified and trade routes became battlegrounds. The once open seas, a source of prosperity and connection, now bore the scars of contention. The Dutch states, driven by their ambition and growing economic power, continued to press their advantage. Their cities became centers of wealth and military strength, from which they could project their influence across the region and beyond. As we delve into the Middle Ages, the landscape of conflict between the Frisians and the emerging Dutch states deepens. This was a time of turmoil, characterized by a series of conflicts known as the friso hollandic Wars, the Frisian-Dutch Wars. 
These wars were not just random skirmishes, but a protracted struggle for control over territories and the preservation of independence. Let's explore these pivotal moments one by one to understand their impact on the Frisian people. In the year 1147, the first recorded conflict between the Frisians and Dutch occurred. A fierce battle, known as the Battle of Ravenswald, unfolded. The Frisians, tenacious and unyielding, fought to defend their land. However, the Dutch, equipped with superior forces, overtook them. The superior Dutch forces overpowered the Frisians, signaling a series of battles spanning centuries. The Battle of Ain. The Frisians, allied with the Drents, faced the forces of the Bishop of Utrecht. Against all odds, the Frisians and their allies emerged victorious due to their fierce desire for autonomy. This victory, however, was but a brief respite in the ongoing struggle. The Dutch, driven by a desire to consolidate their power, launched successive campaigns into Frisian territories. Another defining moment was the Siege of Stavoren, a key Frisian trading port. The Dutch forces, eager to control the lucrative trade routes, laid siege to the city. The Frisians, determined to protect their home, repelled the attackers and won the battle. The relentless Dutch campaigns eventually led to the incorporation of West Friesland. Despite their valor and determination, the Frisians faced overwhelming odds, with fortified cities and superior military tactics tipping the balance in favor of the Dutch. The loss of West Friesland was a turning point, signaling the beginning of the Frisian territory's piecemeal incorporation into the Dutch realm. The Battle of Ronan stands as a poignant example of the ongoing conflict. Here the Dutch forces decisively defeated the Frisians, further cementing their control over Frisian lands. The aftermath saw a harsh imposition of Dutch rule, deeply affecting the local population. But the Frisian spirit remained unbroken. Throughout the Middle Ages, they continued to resist, to fight for their way of life. Every village, every town, became a bastion of resistance against the encroaching power of the Dutch. The Frisians, in their assemblies, vowed to preserve their autonomy. They understood that their struggle was not just for land but for the very soul of their people. The Friso-Hollandic Wars left deep scars on the land and its people. The incorporation of Frisian territories into the Dutch realm was not merely a change of rulers, but a profound transformation of society. As we journey into the 17th century, the Netherlands enters a period known as the Dutch Golden Age. This era of prosperity, however, casts a long shadow over the Frisian lands, marking a time of challenge and change for the Frisian people. The Dutch Golden Age was a time of wealth and wonder. Trade networks spanned the globe, bringing riches and innovations back to Dutch shores. But as the Dutch thrived, the Frisians faced a different reality. In Frisia, life continued much as it had for centuries. The Frisians, proud of their heritage and way of life, found themselves increasingly at odds with the expanding ambitions of their Dutch neighbors. As the Dutch Republic's power grew, so too did its influence over Frisian territories. One by one, areas that had fiercely maintained their independence were drawn into the fold, their autonomy eroded by the political and economic might of the Dutch. The Frisians came face to face with a dilemma. To maintain their distinct identity, or to blend into the rising tide of Dutch culture. The choices made in these homes and communities spoke volumes. While some embraced the opportunities the Dutch Golden Age afforded, others clung steadfastly to their Frisian roots, refusing to let go of their language, their traditions, and their way of life. Despite the dominance of Dutch culture and the shadow it cast over Frisia, the Frisian spirit remained unbroken. In villages and towns across the land, the Frisian language continued to be spoken, and traditional customs were kept alive, a quiet resistance to the tide of assimilation.